Hey everybody, Coulter here. Today I want to show you how to do your own cuttings of things that are non-patented and such like that so that you can potentially save yourself some money. Let's get right into it. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need some mother plants. I have a bunch of German ivy here. Something that's important about a mother plant is you want it to be nice and healthy and you want it to be, uh, you want it to have a lot of branching basal nodes. In this case, you can see German ivy is a great example, which is why I picked it to do this video. But we have all these little nodes. And you can see there's a bunch of them. And each one of those can be a new plant for us off this mother. And we actually have quite a few mothers here of a couple different types. So we've got some ice plant here. These are, these are remnants of stuff from last year. So these are ice plants. We have some German ivy as we just looked at. And then this is a, what we call Bolivian Jew. And it's pretty neat stuff. This is really vigorous as well as the German ivy. What our finished product will look like when it's ready to plant are like these plugs that we saw at the very beginning of the video. These are just about a month old. They'll be a month old in two days. They are nicely rooted in and they are really healthy and strong. They're ready to go in pots where we'll finish them out to sell. We've got ice plant take a little longer. They're a little more fussy, not so bad. Um, usually we figure on about a month to root these. The German Ivy and Bolivian Jew take about a week usually. So if I pull one of these out, you can see they're pretty good, pretty well rooted. These are ready to go in pots. These are some others. They look really, really good. They're ready to get cut. This is a patented variety, so we won't be, we won't be, um, plugging these today or taking cuttings from these today, but I can show you in essence how to do it with these. Um, so if sometimes I want to multiply my seeded petunias more quickly, more easily, I will do it with my own petunia cuttings. A uh, couple things you're gonna need. You notice I have some tags. Whoop, drop that one. Um, these are just normal plastic stake for garden marking or tray marking. You wanna make sure that you record dates and varieties, especially if you're doing things that are flowering. You want to make sure you know what's what color and such like that. So what we want to do is we want to look at our mothers and we want to take any spot that is really healthy and mature and we want to break it off like this and then take this cutting and we'll try to preserve here, we'll try to preserve the actively growing part of the plant and what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off any extra leaves that we don't need. I like to leave one large leaf, so we'll take this big one off, and this one's pretty large, so leave that. And then we're actually gonna plant this, and the first thing we're gonna do is put rooting hormone on it. This one's pretty small. Um, it's still gonna work just fine for us, though. We just don't really wanna bury it past our, our branching node where the new growth is gonna come out of. So let's get to pulling some of these off and then we're going to put them in rooting hormone and put them in dirt. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take these. This is a really good example of a plant that's, that's in really good shape to take some nice cuttings. Kind of spread it out so you can see here, hopefully. This plant has a lot of branching, a lot of branching. And we're look, not looking for leaves, we're looking for um, like shoots or suckers. So. This is the main stem. We've already pulled cuttings off it once. It's pushing new, uh, new suckers or new shoots at the nodes here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break these off. The ones that are nice and healthy and large. Set them down. We wanna make sure we get any dead fall out just so it doesn't rot and cause trouble. And then we will actually put this back in the tray to grow more suckers. So here's another plant. You can see when we take cuttings off one, it really starts to send out a lot of new growth. You can see all these small ones. And whatever we don't take now, 
and we leave will be ready to grow soon. So we'll take this one off here. You know, that's a little short, but that will do really well. And then we'll take this one off here. Pull the deadfall out so we don't get disease. Now this one, I'm going to take this top whole part off and I'm going to leave some of these smaller branches to continue to grow like that. Now what this will do is in another three, four weeks, this one too will be ready to take cuttings off of again. So let's do it again. A lot of the rest of what's on this one's still pretty small. Some of these were pretty aggressively pruned. So now what we're gonna take and we'll just quickly remove all the leaves we don't want. It's kind of important you want nodes that are going to go down in the soil because that's where roots will form. All these little spots where there was a joint to another sucker is, is a node, not necessarily just a leaf. So we'll put that in a little container, keep them separate so that it's easy for us to track out where they are. We want to leave about one larger leaf, unless there's a really good cluster of smaller leaves like this one, we'll just do like that. The reason you want to take the leaves off is because they're extra stress on the plant and this plant doesn't have roots to support a bunch of extra foliage. So, pull all these off. That looks really good. There's a lot of growth happening on some of these. Another thing I might note is if I take one of these older mothers, these haven't been potted up. I left these as examples. These are getting a thicker and woodier stem because the roots don't have enough to support a much larger plant and so the plant starts hardening itself off. We could actually pull some suckers off this, so like this will grow just fine. This one is a nice new small growth, we'll pull that one off. That one will do real nice. This mother is actually pushing up a new, new one from the roots. But we'll put that back in the tray, those are getting a little bit dry. This is a good example of how long I like them to be. So we got a lot of stem here. This will just ensure that there's a little more uh, space for it to generate roots off of rather than just a little nub. And if you look real close here at the very end of this one, this one's actually just starting to generate roots, which is kind of great. In about a week, these will all be rooted. And about another two weeks from that, they'll be ready to transplant. All right, let's go put these into some dirt. All right, so now we're ready to put these in dirt. So I've got myself some rooting hormone. This is kind of an essential key for a lot of different things that you'd take cuttings off of. These German ivy will root rather well without it, but things like ice plants, Dorothianthus, they don't tend to root so well without it with this method. So what we're gonna do is, you really can't have too much rooting hormone. Tack it on nice and thick, and then we're gonna stick it in the dirt. We do want to make sure that we take where all the new growth is coming from and keep that above the soil. That's going to be just important to make sure that we have active and healthy growth above the soil of the top part of the plant, not just the roots. So we'll tack on a bunch of screening hormone there, stick it in the soil, and when we're done with this, we'll want to very seriously saturate our soil with water. And the reason for that is rooting requires very dark, very humid area. And you can uh, force them to root a lot quicker if you keep this soil really wet while they're rooting. Um, you don't want it too hot because you can cause it to rot. Cooler is actually generally better. You want to use a little bit of fertilizer in your water. So like we use with our injector or our bulk tank mix, we're at 75 parts per million in this house for plugs and that'll keep it from burning them. Now we will look at some ice plant here. So this tray here is ice plant, Dorothianthus, and what we want to do with these is you can see the tiny little nodes here, but those there's no way we're going to start that. So actually what we'll do with these is we will break them off like this. This plant is going to do fantastic now. It's going to root faster when we plug it this week and it will grow actually quicker with less plant to support while it is rooting into a four inch pot or four and a half inch pot. 
and this plant will be we'll actually have to cut it back once before we sell around Mother's Day. So I'm gonna grab a tray here we'll put them together for the video sake. Grab my rooting hormone and with these we'll take the leaves off. You can actually leave a couple leaves on the upper part of this plant. The biggest thing with these is these little joints where the leaves are, you want to make sure those stay intact. So we'll put a bunch of that on there and we'll stick it in. Generally I don't advise mixing varieties, I will for the sake of the video, but these will take much longer to root than these. These two sets were done on exactly the same day, same time, they've been handled the same. The German Ivy just tends to be a lot quicker. So I don't generally put them together so the German ivy doesn't crowd out the ice plant. So again, we'll go and we'll pinch that one off, take a look at it, pull our extra leaves off that are going to go below the soil. It's alright if you get a little damage, usually that's fine. Sometimes it actually encourages faster rooting. I don't like to damage them. I feel like it's not the best thing to do, but usually it's alright if you get a little damage. Pull a couple more of these off like this. You know, there are a lot of, these grow wild in California, it's crazy. All right, so then we'll take this, give it some space here, then I'm gonna water it up good. Let it soak in. All right, so now we're gonna take these that we just plugged, and I'm gonna put them in the back corner of the greenhouse where they, it is the darkest for the longest in the day. You don't want these in full sun all day. Um, some varieties will do better than others in more or less sun. If you want them to root the fastest, the best thing to do is use like a germination chamber or a rooting chamber. So it'll be total blackout. You will put them in, it'll keep it around 80 degrees, not quite that warm. And it'll be like 100% humidity and it'll be dark. And what that'll do is that'll force the plant to root pretty much instantly. Um, for tomatoes, usually, you know, no more than like two or three days and we start to see root growth. If I forget them in there for an extra day or two past when, then they'll actually start rooting up the whole sides of the plant. So we will put these over in the corner here and we'll let them grow out. And in about three, four weeks, they'll start to look like this. It's best if you can keep your temperatures Summers, like I said, no more than 75 degrees. It's best if you can keep it around 70 for the rooting process. 75 is great. And keep them nice and wet until they fully set root and then you kind of want to back it off so you don't drown the roots out. So I hope this helps. If you find this useful or entertaining, please like and subscribe. We'd like to hit 1,000 subscribers by June if possible. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Meanwhile, let's get growing.